just kind of check in with the uh, time. Uh, we usually do a little fifth and wine um, section at the beginning. And so you guys aren't allowed to talk, you lesion people right now. But you look good. I mean, that's all you have to do is look good. So you guys, um, so I talked to you last night about timing out um, all your orders. And you guys did perfectly today. I think we still sold like 23 or something um, of the sandwiches, but you spaced it out so well that it didn't stress me out. I didn't have to yell at you tonight, which I think is nice. We're trying to um, we're trying to accommodate our customers in you know more of a conciliatory way, right? And so tonight I have no lectures for you. Um, we got some good news from our governor from the state of Montana today that we actually get to open up on, well, we're not going to open up on Monday, May 4th, because we always take Mondays off in golf and stuff. But people, other people are, and we'll open up on Tuesday. Uh, we talked to our lead cook today a little bit about um, coming in and um, preparing for that. So we're not sure exactly what we're going to do. We're not going to start with the full menu, obviously. That's kind of going to take a little while. And um, as with we all talked about, I think, previously, we're not exactly sure what we're going to do long term. We're going to we'll get back to full strength, and we're going to sell a lot of damn beer, a lot of Elysian beer, especially. Um, and so that's kind of our plan. Um, so we last night we had the Kalispell Brewing Company on, and they're a very small. Um, they do only German style beers. They follow all those you know German laws, which you guys were on last night, which is a very fun. Um, story very great tasting beer and we kind of have a kind of i don't know if the opposite's the right word but we have like a larger brewer on tonight um that's um kathy my wife is going to do the um q a tonight because she's much brighter than me other than her choice in men um but so i always like to start out with a story and she has a short one too um so her family pretty much broke the law, well not pretty much, did completely break the law during the 30s and they were um, bootleggers. So they lived up by the Canadian border in a town called Sweetgrass, Montana. Montanans would know about that. And they, um, they would run beer and booze and whatever down from Canada. And they, we had a trail between Sweetgrass and Great Falls called the Bootlegger Trail that is still there today. And um, they then, in my opinion, this is just my opinion. Um, then they all decided to get legal and they all wrote the laws for the state of Montana. And that whole Watkins family pretty much owned every distributorship from there on after prohibition. And um, now they became completely legal in whatever, 1933. But anyway, it's a fun, if you ever go to their warehouse, Eagle Beverage in um, Great Falls is full of uh, old newspaper articles and old um, pictures of the family. And it's, it's really a fun story other than they broke the law, which I never would do. I mean, there's no one, there's no way anybody ever had a to-go drink during this, this, this period with, with um, and, and drank it inside the store. So. Anyway, here's Kathy. She's going to run the Q&A tonight, and uh, it'll be fun, I think. Well, yeah. And we also have some swag giveaway. We're giving away this tin. And I forgot about last night, we have two caps from the Kalispell Brewing Company and some um, glasses also, some pint glasses. And we have the same thing tonight with the Legion. We have these tins and, and uh, so here we go. Hi everyone, we're gonna have some fun. So my husband told me I have to tell a story. So I'm gonna talk about brand loyalty when you grow up in a distributor's household. When I was young, my parents went out of town and my sister who's on this, Sandy, say hi, that's my sister. She's on tonight. Um, for some reason, my parents decided to have our 21 year old cousin watch us while they were out of town. And we decided to throw a party. Well, it was more Sandy's idea, not mine. Sandy and Jessica's. And of course it got out of control and cops got involved. And sure enough, my parents got the phone call and rushed back to town. And we left the house completely spotless. We cleaned so hard. We spent all night cleaning to make sure that they wouldn't find anything left over from the party. And my parents come in 
yelling and screaming and you're grounded for the rest of eternity kind of talks. They're walking around the house, making sure that everything looks good. My dad finds one cap of Budweiser and sure enough, our grounding went from six months to four months. So that's definitely brand loyalty. He was a lot happier that we were drinking at least the right products. Um, but that's kind of my segue into today. We have three people on. So Chris Bishop, if you can wave and say hi, Chris. Chris Hello. Hi, Chris. Chris is our AV rep in Montana and lives here in Montana. And then we have Kyle Fitzsimmons. Kyle, where are you, Kyle? Howdy. Hi, Kyle. So Kyle is the general manager with Elysian, um, and he is in charge of the founders and other managers with Elysian. Then we have Augie, and I think everybody's seen Augie. Say hi, Augie. Maybe you're on mute. Augie. There we go. Oh, there we, we good? go. Yeah. How's it going? Good. You're good. Hi, Augie. <laughs> there you go. So Augie's going to do most of the talking, but um, I wanted you to start off with telling us because it's way past happy hour. So we are already drinking, but we want to know which order of the beers to start with. So uh, I was going to start with Contact Haze, our brand new uh, hazy IPA, and then uh, float right into Super Fuzz Classic. Uh, as you can see, and uh, I see some backgrounds uh, in the crowd, and then finish it off with, uh, um, this is kind of our, our, our go-to, this is, this is our number one brand right here, Space Dust, nice. which a lot of you have uh, in your windows as well. Nice, and then let's go to Kyle. Um, Kyle, I wanted to pick your brain a little bit. You know, there was a partnership that happened in 2015 between Anheuser-Busch and Elysian and Kyle if you could kind of talk about you know what that meant for Anheuser-Busch to partner with a brewery like Elysian and kind of that process. Definitely I will give a great Paul's a shout out. First date with my wife was at the sip and dip. Uh, <laughs> that's big time. Uh, but yeah I used to be in Montana back then and uh, worked for AB for the last for about seven years. So that was seven years ago I was in Montana. Um, but yeah, it was super interesting. When Elysian came on for AB's portfolio, it was like when they're starting to dive into, you know, opening up the portfolio to have more crap available. Um, and Space Dust was our, by far our biggest brand and it really opened the portfolio for IPAs. So having a big IPA, 8.2%. Um, yeah, so that's the last beer you'll drink, which uh, we'll definitely do it for you. But um, I think for, for them, it was regional and then also for, um, you know, purposes of expanding the portfolio into IPA. So, uh, the nice thing in the partnership for us being that AB owns us is that, uh, you know, we get a lot of resources and opportunities that we wouldn't have before and have an amazing, uh, partners with all the AB distributors. So, um, big thing, I mean, is, as our founders will say consistently is that we don't have to, they don't have to put their houses up for another mortgage again, so they can get a new canning line or anything like that. So that's a nice, nice pickup. But honestly, what it, what it comes down to is our portfolio and what we can help out with, uh, Anheuser-Busch's portfolio too. So, you know, bringing big IPAs and obviously we've expanded past that, but, uh, we're still known for, for making damn good IPAs. Well, and Kyle, what, you know, I mean, we can kind of have an idea of what was the, what was the AB portfolio like, you know, 20 years ago? I mean, what was there, 10 brands, 15 brands, and then now it's just grown like crazy? Yeah, I mean, it, it was pretty big, but I'd say that the craftiest, it was big when we got purchased, uh, but the craftiest brand that we could think of is probably, you know, Stella and Shock Top, which are a great brands, but really not what people think of when they think, you know, local craft breweries. So, uh, versus now when there's 14 different craft breweries across the United States under the umbrella of our Brewers Collective. Um, it's a lot, lot different than it was. And I think the, the biggest thing and biggest takeaway is that, you know, AB wasn't trying to, like Anheuser-Busch wasn't trying to, to brew all these amazing local craft breweries, or sorry, beers. They weren't trying to brew all of them. They were trying to find the best ones there locally and, and make sure that we, they kept us the same. So, you know, our founders are still involved our brewmaster is the same. Uh, we still have the same crew of people and we just have more resources to do what we want to do. It's really cool. 
Nice, thank you. Um, Augie, you know, Kyle kind of touched on what it would mean for Elysian to be partners with AB. Is there anything that you wanted to add about, you know, to that? Yeah, I mean, I can add uh, a little bit different vibe to it. It's, uh, it, he's spot on with it as far as resources go. I actually, uh, before I joined AB, I was with a group of super small craft breweries, um, specifically the size of what you see from uh, the ones that are going to be presenting this week as, as well. So um, I think it's huge just for uh, the employees that are still with the company that, that stuck around. Uh, 401ks, health insurance is huge. Obviously, uh, adding people to the mix that are super passionate and it's just not a job to them, right? Like, I feel like Kyle and I are, we're obviously new additions to the Elysian family in the last year and a half, two years. Uh, but it almost feels like we're adding in a, um, uh, uh, what, lack of a better word, dream team, all-star team, however uh, you want to take it. But um, it's definitely, oh, my computer cut out. There we go. Um, anyways. Anheuser-Busch is a fantastic parent company coming from smaller craft breweries and thinking of, of uh, I don't know if we lost you. I like where he was going though. Okay. You know? So <laughs> I can keep that going, but uh, yeah. <laughs> at the end of the day, it's a good partnership and somebody to honestly like have as a parent company, but also keeps their hands out. So I think that's the biggest thing is that, you know, we run independently, we keep our employees here. Uh, we've had, you know, a ton of employee retention yet. Uh, nobody really dips their hand. They just keep letting us do what we do best, which is make, make really good beer. Was there any kind of, Kyle, do you know about the buyout or, I mean, was there a buyout? How did that whole, do you know how that whole process worked? I'm kind of going off our little script that I had, but wondering if you know any information on that. Yeah. Yeah. So this, so the brewery has been around since 96. So they were, they were brewing uh, in Seattle for a long time before it really ever came to that. And it was, it was honestly the three partners, two of which are still involved. Um, we're ready for a change, right? They were, they were ready, you know, to, to move on to different things. And uh, um, yeah, the great thing was that uh, Anheuser-Busch was there and it was the right partnership. Mainly what they were looking for in a partnership was exactly that, that they wouldn't come in and change everything and change management and do all of that. Um, so I think it was just the right time and uh, it was the right, things, right, right thing for the brewery, right thing for Anheuser-Busch. Nice. Very good. Um, so you said that uh, Allegiant has been around since 1996. Um, and I know there's a couple different tasting rooms. Do you want to talk about where they where they're located and how people would would find them and go there? Yeah, our original brewery um, that was in '96 in Capitol Hill in Seattle, still there, still rocking. Even in these times, we're doing takeout and delivery from it right now, trying to keep our employees involved, which is really cool. Um, and then uh, from beyond that. Uh, we have our field location. So if you ever go to a Seahawks game, if you ever go to uh, a Mariners game, we're right there across from Central. Um, and that's our, you know, our bigger location. And then our main brewery is down in Georgetown in Seattle. So just south of South Downtown. Um, and it's got our tap room there and then our main production facility, which is uh, very large. But our tap room right there, no food or anything, but it's where kind of all the local people in Georgetown come to hang out. So three main locations. Uh, but Capitol Hill is where our original location is. Do you guys give brewery tours then too? For anybody on here that wants a brewery tour, yes. Uh, but typically at our pubs, we will. We brew out of all, all three facilities. Um, but yeah, our bigger production facility, a little tougher to do. Uh, but we definitely would if, if there's a request. So um, yeah. So let's talk about the beer, right? That's what we're here for. Um, Let's do so it. are there some flagship brand, or flagship ones that Elysian brews? Are there, you know, I know um, there's some great seasonals. We have one of the season, the summer seasonal tonight with the Super Fuzz. Um, what else can we, you know, what other, what are the flagship brands, I guess? Yeah, number one by far, and what everyone knows us for is Space Us. So that's that last beer you'll have, that 8.2% IPA, originally brewed with Galaxy Hops. So that's where the name came from. Uh, fun fact about Space Us that not a lot of people know. So 
if you remember the Pop Rocks commercials way back in the day, there was a guy who was like space us and it looked very similar to this. And we really liked it and basically went to uh, General Mills and asked him if we could have the label. And we basically took that, changed the hop, changed the guy to a hop. And that's what it looks like now. So it's pretty wild on that end. But uh, yeah, so space has been around uh, since pretty early on. I would say, I think we started brewing it in the early 2000s. Uh, so by far, number one priority. Uh, our second biggest right now is Contact Haze. So that's the one that you're drinking. It's our hazy IPA. Um, and didn't leave anything on the table for this one. So huge hop load, which your typical hazies do, hazies have. So this is just about four pounds of hops per barrel, uh, which is a pretty, pretty insane amount compared to even just Space Dust has just over a pound of hops per barrel. Um, and using some really specific hops in here too. So um, some Sabros and Southern Passions, some of those ones that are pretty unique and give you those coconutty flavors and stuff like that. Um, and then Super Fuzz right behind it. So Blood Orange Pale Ale. You'll get to that if you haven't already cracked that one open. But that one started off summer seasonal about four years ago. And then we moved it to last year. So you can get it year round. Um, and then you can ask what, who the guy is, what the guy is, but there's, it's not necessarily Jimi Hendrix. It's not necessarily anybody in particular. You can think what you want. Uh, that's how we like it. It's just kind of our brand ethos, right? So, uh, yeah, I would say th those three in particular, and then our seasonal, you'll see the summer seasonal come out as well, which is salute the sun, which is a, like a black lime pale ale. So we basically took the hid limes threw that into the brewing process. Um, and then it's, pretty insane but you'll have to try it to to get to know it yeah i would say those are those are the big ones that we focus on contact days being the biggest okay uh, as we rolled it out um, we've got a couple of questions here so someone's asking where do your hops come from and then right behind it they're asking what are galaxy hops is that actually a, a hop or is that something you guys came up with yeah so galaxy was a uh, is a hop that's still out there people still use it we just couldn't get enough to keep it in the beer to be honest um problem with some of those when you scale up really hard to to continue to use them um sorry what was the other one? Oh, where uh, are we getting hops where do you get your hops yeah yeah the majority of the hops come from yakima washington um with, there's also a farm goose island started a farm in uh, northern idaho like in bonners bonners ferry so just over um west a little bit but majority come from yakima so of all the hops in the united states uh, a lot of them come from either yakima or Germany, obviously, but Idaho, all in that area. Majority of them come from Yakima for us, though. So. Nice. Um, and how do you keep your hazy fresh in a can? Um, Martin and Beth said that that flavor can fade pretty pretty quickly. In a can versus a bottle? Is that what the question is? Must be. Yeah, a funny thing is, is like what well, you've seen the transition in craft, a lot of crafts moving to cans. Mm -hmm. uh, we typically see less oxidation. Um, it's they're both super sustainable right now, to be honest. Like we're, our technology has gotten good enough to where we can keep uh, beer very, very good uh, for a long time in can and bottle. Uh, with with cans in particular, we have a shorter shelf life typically on hazies um, for exactly that reason. Hazies tend to lose some of their suspension. We've done some things where uh, all natural ways that work out really well. There's some additives that people use or brew with. Uh, additives being like some brewers use oatmeal. Um, certain corn husks and stuff like that. Um, not which we use, but um, yeah, there's different ways you can do it, but in the can, it's just as good as in the bottle. Nice. Um, a question that we had last night that we didn't quite get to, kind of, kind of came in later. People were kind of wondering, what does, what does yeast bring to beer? What do, what do um, hops bring to beer? What does malt bring to beer? Can you kind of, you know, in the, I guess the simplest sense, talk about each one of those? Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, the, the very simple one is that your malts bring a lot of sugars. Um, so, you, you, you can play around with the malts from having smoked malts from some of that stuff. But, you know, malt brings sugar, yeast eats that sugar, and basically puts out alcohol and CO2. Um, so, that's where, you know, we get those interactions. Um, and you can tell the differences in a lot of the yeast simply from, like, different – if you ever heard of Britannomyces and some of those sours uh, – Definitely tastes a lot different, tastes farmy um, in some different ways. But simplest sense, malt brings sugar, yeast eats the sugar, makes alcohol, makes us happy. What about uh, food pairings? What do you recommend for each one of these? 
Uh, let me see if I, don't I would say steal the thunder. I think Augie's on here. There you Augie, go. Augie's back. You guys passed. Yeah. Sorry, my um, computer died uh, for the internet. It didn't work at all. Anyways, uh, <laughs> food pairing. I would say contact haze, obviously being more fruity, tropical flavor profiles, getting the kind of vanilla woody flavors that we get from Sabro. Uh, definitely more uh, curry base or like uh, maybe a sweeter uh, flavor profile with some heat. Uh, would be ideal and then uh, super fuzz bigger malt backbone I'd probably go like barbecue chicken uh, get that more umami flavor profile which is really nice and then space dust as a whole because of the big boozy body that it has uh, and then it's like super bold sort of like grapefruit uh, passion fruit tones I'd probably go steak um, but it just depends on, on your day to day you kind of want to balance out acidity um, with uh essentially malt backbone sweet sour spicy savory that kind of mixture and glassware too that was a big question you know last night glassware and then temperature of the beer so with those german style ones we had on last night they were talking about a little bit of a warmer temperature but of course in in america we we drink our beers cold you know that's how we like it but any recommendations for glassware and temperature yeah to be honest actually uh i mean obviously it's always been like the american way of, of having super cold beer and uh i actually think that having um ipas uh not as like straight out of the freezer cold that you get from like uh say a lager um but kind of like maybe let it get closer to room temperature i wouldn't say room temperature but with a a little bit more warmth brings out a lot more of the aroma, a lot more of the flavor profile, the hops. Um, so within glassware, I mean, IPAs, you can use shaker pints. Uh, they have their own special IPA glasses that have these nice fluted lips uh, that kind of bring out like a um, almost a, a tulip vibe. But at the end of the day, it just allows for the aroma of the beer to come out of it more. Uh, uh, yeah, there you go. So. <laughs> that's usually yeah that tulip style is usually built out for a belgian style beers but it serves really well for uh, ipas for sure nice um you know i know that the super fuzz is a summer seasonal can you touch on what other seasonals will be coming out with yeah so uh, uh to kyle's point right super fuzz was fantastic uh seasonal our number one summer seasonal obviously the uh and our kind of our, our go-to summer beer. Moving that to a flagship, we're, uh, we moved in Salute the Sun with those black limes uh, that Kyle touched on. But at the end of the day, we've got some great uh, innovation brands coming out. This uh, essentially last, well, this month in particular, we're launching a brand with Rolling Stone Magazine, which is super cool. Obviously iconic uh, music and uh, journalism, as well as some uh, kind of classic uh, artistry inside of those uh, those magazines uh, and then pairing with the Elysian brand has, has been a really cool partnership that Kyle and team have been working on for about a year or so but that's a Hellas lager uh, we haven't had a lager in our portfolio we've always been kind of known for like higher ABV bigger batter bolder beers so uh, finally having a lager in the portfolio that stands up to the quality of all of our other brands that we do have is, is super exciting for us um, and then we're a big partner with, uh, with Pride across um, the West Coast as well as the East Coast. Um, is we have this beer called uh, Cake Topper that essentially is a, uh, a brute IPA with vanilla and guava. Uh, it was hands down my favorite beer last year's fantastic pub innovation that we have coming down the pipeline uh, that we're just playing in 16 ounce cans uh, outside of the pub. So interesting. Well, yeah. and I. Um, my first beer that I ever had with you guys that I made me fall in love with Elysian was in the fall. So one of your pumpkin beers. Um, I think it was an, it was an owl one, maybe. Night owl. There Night you owl. go. Yeah. Uh huh. So are you still yep. doing the, the pumpkin beers? And I, I hear there's a fun festival that people can attend too. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah. So pumpkin fest is uh, kind of Elysian's, um, I wouldn't, I mean, Hallmark uh, institutional kind of event, but it, it's it's definitely the 
the keystone of our year. It's a fantastic way to bring in wholesalers to uh, show people in the uh, the area, uh, Pacific Northwest as well as Seattle, uh, what the Elysian brand is all about. But um, to Kyle's point earlier, uh, when I wasn't able to hop on is uh, that Dick, Joe, and Dave, when they first started the uh, brewery back in 96, is it's been 25 years, but they haven't stopped innovating, right? So a big piece of our business is constantly innovating and pumpkin beers has kind of been our niche for the last uh, 10 years or so, I'd say. Um, but Pumpkin Fest, essentially we have over, what was it, Kyle, like 60 different pumpkin beers last year? You were like a kid in a candy shop. When we. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a, uh, so yeah, the mix of it, I think we had 40 different pumpkin beers. So from other breweries, a little bit in there, but we did over 25 and then uh, also fresh hop seasons right then too. So we do our fresh hop beers then, but yeah, take it back. Sorry. Oh, that's all right. That, it was uh, Kyle's first pumpkin uh, fest last year and uh, it, it was a blast being up there on top of the great pumpkin. We get in front of everyone. Uh, both nights um, we have the week prior we do a pumpkin way off with all these local farmers uh oh man down man down <laughs> down uh, that didn't very well <laughs> sorry <laughs> so with with pumpkin fest the tradition is that we have this great pumpkin that's kind of the iconic uh centerpiece of our table of our party if you will but the week prior this great tradition started at a um at our brewery facility that we do the great pumpkin way off with local farmers throughout the Pacific Northwest. And uh, these, these giant pumpkins, right, get up 1,200 pounds plus. Uh, and the two top pumpkins every year get selected to be the, uh, the beers that we carve out. And we fill with, uh, it's either, last year I believe it was Dark Knife and Great Pumpkin. Prior years it's been Punkachino, but we make all of these different beers with pumpkin in them. So putting them inside of these Great Pumpkins and then tapping them uh, kind of old English style as a cask um, is kind of the um, height of the evening that we do during these. But all the proceeds, the best part of this is kind of the thing that I got cut off with when I my computer died was uh, the thing that attracted me to Legion coming from Small Craft Brewery is that it gives back. Uh, a big thing from the brewery that I came from in Jackson is that the owners were large, uh, uh, huge philanthropists and, and their uh, – uh, I guess means definitely giving back to the community was a huge part of my early uh, craft beer uh, experience. So Elysian is very, very uh, in-depthly uh, engaged with the community, working with nonprofits. So Great Pumpkin Fest, all the proceeds or part of the proceeds go to Fred Hutch, uh, which is our large cancer research center here in Seattle. I believe last year it topped out at about close to $250,000 as far as donations go. So um, Pumpkin Fest not only highlighting beer and music and kind of creativity of our brand, but also giving back to the community, which is super cool. And is this something that just general public can go and participate in? Yeah, absolutely. So we sell, what is it, Kyle, like 3,000 tickets or so between the two nights? 4,000 tickets? Yeah. So we had like about 3,000 people each night. Um, tickets, I think, are 29 bucks. So really affordable. Gets you a little mug, gets tickets. Go try all the beers you can. So it would just be information would be on your website then if people wanted to go? Social media, Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, all the good stuff. All the fun ways, yeah. Okay. Usually start uh, pumping, uh, pumping the market with pumpkin uh, around August 1st, so. This year we have our uh, the second year of our um, variety pumpkin pack, which has four different pumpkin beers in it, which uh, we're super excited about. And we're already preparing. Uh, how did the name Elysian come come about? Great, great question uh, from the people in the back. So Elysian is <laughs> in Greek th uh, theology or mythology, if you will. Elysian is a place that warriors would go to after battle to uh, imbibe and um, have good times with their friends uh, in the greater sense of things. Essentially, it's like um, after a long work day, uh, warriors want to go drink or have a good time. Oh, Dusty, Dusty wants to party too. Um, anyway, so Elysian, back in the day, uh, Greek mythology, it goes towards where warriors uh, go after battle to uh, relax. 
what town the pumpkin festival held in seattle washington at fisher Center in the heart right underneath the space needle it's beautiful last year we had dj <laughs> jelly friday night it was epic ip is seen to be your bread and butter what i do this all night what other styles do you guys make and do you can bottle it for us in montana yes absolutely lots of ipas uh we're more on the hot basis that was kind of the big thing for Elysian is our growth was uh, Space Dust Immortal IPA. We also make Men's Room Red. Uh, I don't know if you guys get that on Montana. I don't think so. Anyways, that's an amber or a Northwest Red Ale. Uh, but all the some of the proceeds from that, $10 from every barrel, I believe, go to the Fisher House uh, in Seattle. That beer is fantastic. But the Men's Room uh, Radio Show is a nationally uh, broadcasted radio station uh, that is more like classic rock and uh, progressive music. So nice. Um, how about awards? Has Elysian won any awards? Absolutely. So in 2004, 2005, I believe in 99, 98, uh, we were the mid size and small brewer of the year at the Great American Beer Festival. Uh, our beers have also, are you the largest craft brewery in Washington? Uh, yes. Uh, can we get the amber out here in Montana? Uh, I wish, but not so much. Um, but as far as awards go, Great American Beer Festival is epic party in Denver, Colorado. Every fall, if you haven't gone, it's the granddaddy of them all. It's kind of like the uh, Super Bowl for craft brewery nerds and lovers. I went eight straight years right at the beginning of my career. It was epic. Um, yeah, that was actually one thing that drew me to Elysian when I was moving back home to Seattle out of uh, Jackson, Wyoming and selling in Montana and Idaho uh, is that uh, Elysian, not only do they innovate with a bunch of weird, crazy ingredients, but they also produce fantastic beers that won uh, very distinct full awards nationwide, worldwide. That's great. I'm, I am so happy to hear that. Um, do we have any other questions from anybody else? Well, I just, I wanted to say that I'm so happy that you're a partner with Anheuser-Busch. You know, like I talked about in my story, I grew up with brand loyalty and I had to, you know, once I became of drinking age, everything that I, yeah, right. Right. <laughs> Cause I didn't drink before that. Once I became of legal drinking age, um, I completely understood growing up at a wholesaler household what brand loyalty is. So now it's fun that I can go branch out. But I did, hopefully everybody got this. There was some confusion when we were doing, putting these packs together for everybody, but hopefully everybody got their Budweiser. And I'm actually opening up a can, but I wanted to do kind of a final, final toast with Budweiser because it, it's my personal favorite style of lager. Augie, okay, can't wait to try the lager from Elysian once it comes out. Let's go. Gotta yeah. put some forecast. Oh. Right. <laughs> so if you didn't get a Budweiser, um, let Fifth and Wine know. We will make sure that the next time you pop in, you can pick one up. Um, but cheers. Thank you guys so much for being on here. Um, everybody's saying that they love it. So we appreciate it. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Good night. Cheers. The diesel. Well, you don't, you, don't get to, you don't get away that easy. I guess we're not done. Oh, all right. Story time with a puppy. No, no, no. <laughs> no story times. No. Hey, warm shirt boy, you can't really say much. <laughs> Just because a, a gay puppy doesn't mean much. Oh, I guess that's probably, that's not bloody correct, sorry. Um, so tomorrow night, who do we have, Kathy? Tomorrow night is Bo Bozeman Brewing Company from Bo Bozeman. I had a long conversation. I have learned more in the last 48 hours about beer than I ever thought I would. Um, I've never been much, well, I used to drink beer, but then I got old and fat and decided I should go to wine. And I, I am having fun with this this week. It's so cool. Um, so tomorrow night we've got Mark on, at least, at least him, um, from Bozeman Brewing Company. And we're gonna continue our beautiful Cubano sandwich tomorrow. Thanks again for opening up um, the whole ordering process to, to being orderly. I mean, I think that is the point of order. And then we have um, three, yeah, giving away that dog. <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, 
we have three of these these to give away tonight. So these are uh, nice, nice tin. Um, and then the one that Kathy dropped and broke the glass that I'm gonna have to clean up later is this. We got three of those for your decorating pleasure. And then we have three of, I think maybe just one of these actually, a nice old Budweiser sign. And we have um, those hats from last night, Kalispell Brewing. And we have, um, oh, some pint glasses from Elysian and also from um, Kalispell Brewing. So Tara is going to do the drawing completely on her own, I guess. I don't know. She'll probably cheat. Maybe my maybe your brother will win. I don't Jake's know. Jake's gonna get like three of them. Right. right. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll actually make it pretty much legit, right, Tara? Yeah. We can get more of these if we have to. Right. No, we'll make it 100% legit. She'll send out with her email um, later tonight or tomorrow morning with this recording of who won. So there's 54 people that are on uh, tonight, and we're gonna send out who won all that swag and we've got more swag coming tomorrow night. There's a hoodie coming from um, Bo, uh, Bozeman Brewing Company. I think a couple of t-shirts or something. I don't know, we're just trying to, we're just trying to make you guys want to do it again. So it's pretty much our deal. I think that's it. Anybody else have anything? See you guys all tomorrow night on our virtual beer tasting with the Bozeman Brewing Company. Thanks so much to Elysian and to Anheuser-Busch it was a fun, informative night, and uh, and I don't know. I think Cheers. Kathy did a pretty good job. Keep it classy. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The in Seattle Pumpkin Fest.